I did what any person in my position would have done. I beat the shit out of this guy, all right? I'm sorry, guilty as charged. I beat the bejesus out of this man. I rolled up on Mr. Hat like I was on a mission. I put more hands on this man than Sunday service. Hello, Cloudy. Um, thank you for being here. Um, my question to you is, uh, are you used to this level of fame yet? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm getting used to people stopping me and saying, oh, I love you from you know, like that TikTok or the sore run or this and that. Um, it's still, it, it's surreal to me. Like, it's still a very surreal experience because I recall not that long ago just running around making constant music videos, which was great, I loved it. Uh, but to have it shift to where it's me, like they're looking for me specifically, versus wanting to be in a video, it's just a lot to take in. But I love it, you know. Um, even MomoCon last year when I wasn't a guest, I got stopped by a ton of people, like a ton. Oh my God, like to where it was like a circle of people that were fun. That was, that was I. That was really I, but I loved it. So short answer is yes, I'm slowly getting to Hmm, Cody, uh, Cornell from Cornell Howard Pictures. So, from last year to this year of Momocon, being unofficial to official status, what has changed? Um, the DMs uh, have increased for sure, which is cool. Like, I love that, because I actually need that. Um, I didn't realize, like, because from my point of view, when I make content, like, I'm usually just, I'm going to make something funny or heartfelt or whatever, just because I'm in that zone, I just want to get it out there, share my heart. But I've had an increase of people who tell me, like, oh, Cloudy, look, this video you did, like, helped me out of a depressive state, or this video you did helped a friend of mine. Like, things like that have started to, like, increase in number. And I'm like, wow, oh, like, because you don't think about that kind of impact you're going to have. You know, you just, from your point of view, it's like, I'm creating, I'm being silly. That's, that's it. That's the extent of it. So when you get messages like that, like, even someone earlier stopped me when I first got in. Like, I just want to tell you, my friend just, you know, you really helped her out. And I'm just like, wow, that's just like, so that kind of stuff has changed. Um, you know, I'm starting to get paid for like brand deals here and there, so that's cool. Just like companies seeing my videos pop around, like, hey, I want you to promote this thing I'm doing or whatever. So that's that's really nice. I'm enjoying the ride. It fluctuates, you know, like any business, but I'm, I'm enjoying it. So those are the main changes. Um, so you're known for a lot of your content, but you're also known for two very particular cosplays that you do. Your sword cosplay, which I love, and uh, your pool bar cosplay. What was your inspiration behind wanting to create those cosplays for your look? Okay, so the Sora specifically, that came during the pandemic, and that was all. I know people are probably expecting this really heartfelt, like, oh man, he must have been doing that his whole life. The truth of the matter is, the pandemic hit, and I was, I remember being bored of the house, and I had a keyblade in my, my storage, like just in my garage. So I was like, I'm gonna go out in the yard and just run around. With it. You know, whatever. And that went viral. So from there, I was like, okay, people like Sora. That's funny. And it's just funny to just like roast on him. You know, I, I, then I transitioned to videos of him getting just whooped by every character on the man. <laughs> and I, I made this template. And I don't even know why I chose this song or the template, but it was like 2 a.m. one night during the pandemic. And I was like, I just want to see him just get tossed in slow motion. So I found this song on TikTok. It was uh, this, I had no idea, whatever. And uh, from there, that started blowing up, so I just kept putting him in those situations, and that's how he got popular. And I mimicked his run, you know, his whole iconic, throw his whole body into it, and that's how that went about. Now, Kuwabara, that's different because it's weird. Like, I didn't watch Yu Yu Show when it was out, like, fresh, but because, like, you know, I grew up in the 90s, whatever, like, watching that anime, it's like you feel like you're connected to it somehow, because you know it came out that time you were, like, you know, Active, I'm not active, I don't know what the word is, but you're, you're a hater, you know. Um, so when I watch you, Hakusho, there's that sense of comfort and nostalgia. So then with your event, not your event, cool Bara, I just learned I can imitate his voice. So I, once I started doing that, I was like, you're messy, you blah, 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 you know, <laughs> you fuck, you're gonna get it. Like, once I was able to do that, I'm like, why don't I just cosplay him and just see what happens? And that blew up in my car, because I did one of him dancing around, you know, doing all this stuff, and that was, that took off. So.
those are my two, like, right now my two biggest characters, for sure. I actually got to be in your last Sora walk, so thank you. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, for sure. But coming on 20 years of the franchise, it's like everybody's got a Kingdom Hearts origin story, so I'm, I'm curious how you found your way into that or Final oh, yeah. Fantasy. I vividly remember way back in like 0203, we had a game magazine, I was with my friends, and it was like, a, we opened it up, and we see this kid with like big clown shoes and like a key sword. We called it a key sword. It's like, why is, what is this? But we saw a Disney character, so we were really intrigued. I remember this like it was yesterday. It was at my buddy Robert's house. But like, um, from there, we're like, okay, we're, that's cool. We gotta look into this. And then the commercial hit. You know, the you walk, all that. Like, when that hit, we were sold. We were like, we gotta get this game, we gotta play it. And that was my, like, all of high school, just like going through Kingdom Hearts. You know, getting to the title screen, just letting that music play out. Any Kingdom Hearts fans out there, you know, dearly beloved. But like, that was so iconic of a memory that I remember, even though I roasted them years later when I did my videos, that was just that moment. Like, that moment of remembering how good that felt, just the whole energy of that game. You know, it's a very, like, heartwarming game. You know, pun intended, Kingdom Hearts is a very heartwarming game. So, yeah. Uh, do you remember your first cosplay ever? Technically, yeah. Um, my first one, and I didn't even realize at the time when I was like in sixth grade, right, 90, whatever, like, I put on some old skates I had. They had worn out, so I took this, the little insoles out, and they were blue. And I was like, I like Dragon Ball Z. So I remember getting some rubber bands, tied them around those, and I was running around the house like I'm going to. I didn't have the full you know, gear or whatever, but like, that was my first technical costume. Officially, it would have been, ooh, probably in someone. It, you'd have to be a diehard Cloudy McKinnon fan to know what I'm about to say. The robot character I made mean, named Remoji back in like 2012, somewhere in there. There's like this big like red headphones. Like it's super obscure. Like again, nobody current would know about it. But that was my first official costume. And then I started graduating. And I was like, well, this is an exception. <laughs> Today is an exception. But normally I have my full blown Cloud Stripe cosplay. That's my official official. All right, um, so since you are cosplaying while black, let me ask you this. How do you handle any negative criticisms or comments you may get while in cosplay? You know what's interesting? Um, there's internet world and then there's the real world, like we are now. Internet world, they'll say whatever they want because they're safe behind you know, the screen. They're safe behind the little keyboard, as I say. I've never had anyone come and try to disrespect me in my face. I've actually seen someone, this is a funny story, I won't say their name, but I've seen someone who's talking reckless about me online, and like I saw them at a convention, I was like, hey, what's up? And they just like beeline the other way, like they just, <laughs> yeah. you know, cause so it's, it's very, like once I understood they're protected by that, they can let those thoughts pro flow freely. Um, I don't take it to heart, you know, like yeah, it can be hurtful or whatever, like I did a video, it was, um, I was dressed as Goku, and it was like, Chi Chi, do you love me? And he's like dancing and stuff. That went viral, but in a bad way. That went viral to where like everyone hated it. It was putting it on random websites, like it was getting millions of views all over the place, but it was because it was cringe. And like that was different, but it still was exposure. Because like even last year, Momo got a lot of like young dudes who were like, oh man, you look up, you look Chi Chi guy, look at a picture or whatever. So, you know, but the comments in that were pretty brutal, cool, but it's, no, it's, it's not good. I can handle it. I'm sorry, get a question. Okay, that's a deep one, because I've loved Final Fantasy literally since I was like 11 or 12. So like that was, that's one of those games, and like specifically Cloud Strife, where I really resonated with that character. Um, so obviously when I got older and was able to cosplay, I got into, you know, being him specifically. Um, and not to get like too deep into it, but just something happened when I was in seventh grade that was really emotional. Like it, it was really just heart-wrenching. And I remember FF7 was my comfort game when I got home from school that day, you know, like that was like, that moment is encapsulated in time, so every time I am, every time I do something Cloud Strike related, that like still gives me a level of strength of like, you know, you remember a moment like that, and it's like it reshapes or starts to shape who you're going to become, um, specifically in my case, not leaving people out of things, you know, because that's essentially what happened with that situation, but you know, that's kind of how I got into Final Fantasy. Here we are, <laughs> dressing up. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. 
So I know for Cloud versus Seth, I thought you. What was the process like of getting a green screen studio? Oh, that, wow. was the, that was the first time I've heard of that. Because I know if I mess up something, I gotta put the outfit back on. But you had to go sit hours away and rent the spot. And yeah. Um, so shout out to Atlanta. I actually did that here. Uh, I went to a green screen studio out here. It was, you know, back then when I did it. I needed the space to run around, you know, yeah. with Seth and Thought and Cloud specifically. Because the stuff I did in that battle, I couldn't have done it at home in my green screen. There was too much running, too much active. Because if you actually watch that video compared to my others, that's the only one that has, like, full range of motion where I'm actually, like, yeah. you know. Um, so that whole process, yeah, come out here, film it, go back home, edit it. And it's funny, when I put on the Seth and Thought outfit, it's like, it, it's, it's fun to get in the character because everyone knows I commit, obviously I commit. Um, but honestly, just when I do the Sephiroth character, like that's one of people's favorites. But it's also I feel so like dirty when I'm doing it because <laughs> like I'll start doing shoulder shimmies and doing these like very overly sexual, overly sexual uh, looks and stares. And I mean, the people love it. Like the crowd loves it. But it's just when I take that off, I gotta go take a shower, I gotta wash my soul. I gotta do it all because Sephiroth takes. You know, but it's fun to, you know, just yeah. unleash a little bit like that. So, yeah. All right, um, with content creation and cosplay, uh, and you combine them together into a nice brand and niche, uh, my question for you is this, um, how do you, how do you uh, go about approaching your content as far as like planning it and shooting it and things like that? And what is your favorite part of the content creation process? Okay, that's a good question. Um, so with me, because I, I, I have a very overactive imagination, I tell people, um, the ideas are constantly on just full blast, just constantly just running, 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 right? So for me, I'll just get the idea, and instantly I'm like, okay, let me go to my either green screen room, go out in the backyard, wherever I gotta go, let me film this concept, let's get out of my head, you know? I do that, I go inside, edit it, do, 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 boom. My favorite part is people's reaction to it, because you never know what's gonna pop, what's gonna, you know, really do what it does. Because sometimes my least amount of effort projects is what blows up, you know? Uh, my favorite part is everyone's reaction. Or their quote the video I've done. You know, like I did one called uh, Final Fantasy Panacea. And that's one everyone quotes now. It's like Panacea or Panacea. Like just the word Panacea, they'll just comment that on every video I do now. So it's just cool. The reaction. So. Oh, well, uh, you, you do a lot of singing. What, what is your musical background? Uh, let's see. It's weird. When I was growing up, you know, my like my father was in the choir. My mom can't sing all that well. Sorry, mom. Um, <laughs> my uh, eldest sister sings phenomenally. My middle sister passed in 21. She can sing phenomenally. Um, I was too shy to sing at the time because I, I would hear them, like they would harmonize all the stuff. And I liked it. My ears were attuned to it, but like I didn't get into that. You know. But if I think back a long time ago, I think it was always in me because I vividly remember being like a little guy five years old, <laughs> excuse me, and my sister would have slumber parties, so all our homegirls would crowd into the den, and I was a little guy, so they would call me down, like, little cloud, I mean, you know, say my name, like, little cloud, you bring him down, and I had this little bitty speaker box, a little recorder, and they'd be like, just do something, so I'd just be like on the mic, just like, ah, making noises, like, I didn't sing, I'm just making noises, but I enjoyed performing for them, performing, so I feel like that might have been that, like, low-key origin that I didn't really, you know, pay attention to. And then when I got older, I was in a rock band. I did background vocals, and then people started telling me, you sing pretty well, why don't you do the main vocals? And I was like, nah, my best friend's a singer. I don't want to, I'm the type, I didn't want to like take his like light, if you will. Mm -hmm. I was like, nah, he, you know, I don't want to step on any toes. And then over time, you just kind of naturally, it comes out of you. Mm -hmm. Like I'll joke sing and make videos, and people go, oh my God, that's really good. So that's kind of how that happened. Just forcing it out of myself, moving around. Oh, uh, He's in lead, he can go. I'm in lead, okay. Um, <laughs> so, Cloudy McDoom, that is such a cool and interesting name. Where did the name come about from? Man, um, obviously, my love of Final Fantasy, Cloud has to be in there. Um, the Cloudy McDoom, I don't know, it's like you'll be somewhere chilling and you'll just be like thinking of like, I need a cool name. Because I was actually, this is the transitional point where I went from my Octavio Boy stuff where I was doing cosplay videos to my skits. And I was like, I need a different name since that's like my video stuff. I need something for me. So I sat there, I sat there. And I, I kid you not, originally, it was like something. It was like something make, make boom, something. I can't remember. But I landed on Cloudy McDoom and I just kind of rolled with it because I like the way it sounded. 
And I vividly remember going to like my best friend, shout out to Kenji. I was hanging out with him and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna start calling myself Pride of Me Doom. And he looked at me and he was like, okay. Like it was one of those like, cool man, for you. <laughs> but uh, that's kind of how that happened. And then the most surreal part about that is you see your name popping up everywhere. You see people saying Cloud of Me Doom to you at a con, wherever, like Cloudy, Cloudy, Cloudy. Me. So like, because I remember that origin. I remember writing it down on paper, like I'm gonna call myself that. That's how that comes out. But, uh, so, I feel like as black creators, we always kind of have this internal sense of community. Even on the way here, we all stopped and we saw fantastic Frankie and her crew. We all yeah, 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 yeah. Show each other love real quick. What has it been like for you forming and finding members for this wall? That's been really cool because that kind of starts with, you know, obviously they'll like be watching me on Twitch or whatever, and then they'll kind of transition to Discord and whatnot. But I think for me, like, I have my own. Um, the squall, like I think that's the whole fan base, that's what I like to call it. And then you have the squall that's like strictly like talking to me in Discord and stuff like that. Yeah. Um I'm trying to make sure I don't mess up his lips today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, that's just been great, just having a community of people who, you know, support what you're doing, they care about what you're doing. Cause I, I don't want to be one of those people like a flash in the pan where it's like, oh yeah, he blew up doing that one thing and then he's nobody or whatever. Like so I try to take everything in stride, like I, I for example, I'll try different things to see if it works, you know. And I'll know if it works because if the band is like, oh, that's hilarious, we love that. And if it's not that big a reaction, it's no big deal. I just try something else. But regardless, the love has been great. You know, it's been, that's what keeps you going as a creator. That really is. All right, so you talk about how you um, try different stuff. You ever had something that you thought was really good and you didn't get a reaction that you want? Like, it wasn't like a bad reaction, but you didn't react how you thought? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, there's this thing I did during the pandemic. It was my adult swim pandemic baby, is what I'm gonna call it. And it was called Space Tales of Blacks Jr. And it was meant to be this cheesy, like, it was meant to be a show that was made in like 1991, but got canceled because it was so bad. So I filmed it that way. It looks terrible, but it's so over the top and cheesy. And I used a bunch of Snapchat filters and outer space backgrounds. My girlfriend, Patagonia, loves it. Like, that's hilarious to her. I thought it was hilarious, but like, its reaction doesn't, it doesn't hit that well with the opera. It's just like, people see it, a couple, and it's like, what? Um, as a black nerd, as a black content creator, um, are you proud of your contributions to global culture? I would say so. And that's not to like put myself on a pedestal, like I've trailblazed or done something, you know, no one else has done because everyone, obviously other blurs are doing it too. I just, I feel like I've worked extra hard to be the most authentic version of myself, you know, no matter how quirky, how, you know, off the wall, how just out there it might be. Like, I had that level of confidence and courage to say, like, like even the Sora stuff, when I was first doing it, I was like, people are gonna clown me for this, which they did, but it was in a fun way. It was like, this is entertaining, we love it. But I knew even when I put the stuff on, I'm acting like this little, come on, you know, like, <laughs> like doing the run and stuff. Like, I'm like, I know there's levels of cringe to it, but it's like, if I put myself out there, it's gonna encourage the next creator to say, I can do that too. Like, he has no fear, and he's enjoying it, he's loving it. I can be myself too. But I try to take mine to those extremes. Like, I'm trying to make that threshold of like, look, you can be a blurred, you can be a cloudy blurred, where it's just straight up, just like, cringe city, as it were. But, you know, I, I like to think I'm, I'm helping in that regard. Okay, so you said you want to inspire other people, but who inspired you? That's a really good question. Let me stop and patiently think of that, but not eat up too much of your time. Like, I know when I first started doing my Cloudy Redeem stuff, let's go back to 2018, somewhere in there, 17, 18. Um, I started doing Red Dead Redemption 2 skits, right? With Arthur Morgan, or my version is Arnie Man. If you ever see a cowboy on my page, like the big beard, that's Arnie Man. Um, for me, I got inspired because I would see people like Marlon Webb, you know, who I actually got the pleasure of crashing his house, making videos with him one time, that was great. Um, there was this group of content creators out in LA doing this stuff. And I remember seeing that cross my feet a lot. I'm like, they're doing things. Like, this is goofy, wacky, like, these scenarios, and I love that. Like, I was like, this is cool, you know? And I remember internalizing that, so then when I fast forward to doing the Red Dead for Redemption 2 stuff, I was like, well, I want to do it too. Like, I want to just make silly, but it's game related. It's like stuff I know. And that was what kind of started to get me out there. Because even Roger Clark, the guy who is Arthur Morgan, like the motion capture, the voice, everything, 
Um, once he recognized that we became friends, <laughs> excuse me, sorry. Once we became friends, that's when I was like, oh wow, like that's like, cause he was in my inspiration. Cause Red Dead Redemption Two was just a great game, through and through, just ten out of ten. So like, I don't know, getting an interaction with him too, coupled with the inter uh, the Marlon Webs and all those guys, putting all that together motivated me to say, I want to do this like hardcore. I want to, you know, entertain, act, whatever. So, yeah. My next project, I'm glad you asked that. Now I can plug what I'm doing tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow I'm doing a panel, uh, it's the Content Creator Journey. And I'm gonna premiere a video called Final Fantasy Boss Battle Part 3, which I released part two years ago. And I told everyone, hey, I'll do part three when I hit 50,000 subscribers. I did it, it took years, but I did it. And everyone's been waiting for this video. Even now, to, like as we sit here and speak, like there are people waiting for it to premiere on YouTube next week. So I wanna show it here first, because to celebrate, me being invited to a guest of one of my favorite clients. Hmm. I want to just get everyone's reaction to it at my panel, see what they think about it. So that's going to be tomorrow, 2.30 p.m. in room 2.17, I believe. Uh, I'm going to double check, see if the projectors are there. But I think that's going to be my biggest project right now. Like, that's the one I put a lot of blessed and tears into. And now we're going to see how people take it tomorrow. Thank you very much. <laughs>